Hey, what's up? This is a video about the absolute basics beginner stuff of Bash uh, in the command line. So if you are completely new, this is just going to teach you the basic commands of moving around and looking at files in Bash. So first of all, what is the difference between a terminal emulator, uh, the shell, the command line, the command prompt? So the terminal emulator is actually right now the program I'm in. So ST, that's my terminal emulator. You could use a different terminal emulator. So that's just actually the program we're in. So then what is the shell? In this case, I'm in the bash shell. So I can just do echo dollar sign zero. Uh, that says I am in the bash shell. And the bash shell is just a program and it's a command language. So when I use the command line, so typing out echo dollar sign zero, that's typing on the command line. Uh, and I'm going to feed that into bash. And then just this prompt right here, this is the command prompt. So that is the difference between those four things if you didn't already know. So first of all, we're, we're in a file system when we open the command line. Where are we in that file system? So if I just do pwd for print working directory, we can see we are in my user's home directory, home slash bread. Uh, and that is what this tilde character here means. That's just the same as the home tilde means home. And the reason for that is actually the tilde character and the home key used to be on the same, same key back in the day. Uh, so that's why tilde is an abbreviation for home. So slash home slash bread is really the same thing as this. Okay, so next up, uh, I really want to go into a new directory that I made for this video. How do I do that? I can use the command cd for change directory into my directory. And you notice what I did there is just press, started typing my and then press tab and that's going to tab into autocomplete. Uh, so I'm now in my directory. I can see what's in this directory with the command ls. Okay, and it looks like we have two files here. So I actually want to know a little bit more about these files. So I'm going to use the flag on ls dash l. And that's going to tell me, okay, these files both have read write access. Uh, they're owned by me, Brad, in the users group. Uh, this is the file size, which right now is just a number. So we don't really know how big they are just by that number. Uh, because that's just bytes. And then we have the date and the file name. So let's get that size into something that we can actually read. And okay, now we have a human readable size. That's what the H flag is gonna do. And one more flag, uh, I want to put on the A flag to make sure that these really are the only files in this directory. Because what the A flag is gonna do is allow us to see hidden files or dot files. So files that start with a dot are just gonna be hidden with the base ls command. Um, so you can see I have this hidden file here. Uh, and usually if somebody is referring to dot files, they're just referring to their user configuration files, which all start with dot. They're all hidden files and they're just in your base user directory or in other directories in that. So like dot config, dot local, etc. All right. So we also have this dot dot and this dot. So this first dot here just represents the directory we're in. And then this double dot represents the previous directory. So in this case, the parent directory or previous directory, uh, above my directory is the home directory. So since we just went from my home directory, the tilde character into my directory, you can imagine the directory structure on a file system like a tree. Um, and you can just go down from directory to directory. Okay, so I have these files here. I have this bird.jpg file. I wanna know a little bit more about it. So what I can just do here is file bird.jpg. Okay, uh, we have a JPEG image. We've got the resolution of it. Okay, great. So um, this bird.jpg file, I really wanna rename it because it's actually a hummingbird. So I wanna rename it from bird.jpg to hummingbird.jpg. And to rename, we're actually just going to move the file. If we ls again, we can see we renamed it because we're really just moving it from one name to another name. Okay, so I have this bird dot, uh, hummingbird.jpg file, and I want to put it in a pictures directory. So how can I do that? I can just use mkdir to make a directory, and then I can say pictures. And now we can ls the pictures directory. We don't have to be changed into the pictures directory to be able to ls it. Uh, we can see, okay, well, it didn't return anything because there's nothing in the pictures directory yet. Um, however, I have a couple files that I do want to move in. So I'm going to make a new file and I can just make a new blank file with the command touch uh, bird2. And that's just pretty much for reference. Um, in some cases, you might have to use the command touch, but that's that's just making a completely blank file if I just use ls-ah. Uh, and, and these flags here are interchangeable, the order on the ls command. So 
we can see, okay, this is actually, this file has nothing in it. It's z size zero because it's just a blank file we made. Okay, anyways, so I want to move both of these bird files into the pictures directory. How can I move them both with one command? So what I can do is move uh, MV, and I can just do star bird and then star into pictures. And what are the stars doing? The stars are just saying match everything. So we're saying match everything before the string bird and then match everything after the string bird. So what we can do is see, okay, we've got the string bird and then a two afterwards and then humming before this bird and then a dot jpg afterwards. So yeah, that's gonna match both of these files. And now if we ls the pictures directory again, we can see, okay, yes, we have both of those files moved into the pictures directory. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change into this pictures directory. We can ls again, now that we're here, we, can, we still have those two files. Uh, I really wanted to copy them in the previous directory, so I have two copies of each. So what I can do is cp for copy, and I can just use star here because those are the only two files in this directory, so star is just going to match everything. Uh, and then I can just do that dot dot, if you remember from before, the dot dot symbolizes the parent directory, the previous directory, so cp star to dot dot is just going to copy them into that previous directory. So now we can list that directory, and they are now there as well. So I'm going to go back here a second and just ls again. And, you know, say I had 100 files here and I wanted to find this hummingbird.jpg file and view the size of the file, but I had 100 files and I don't want to scroll through all of it. So what can I do? I can do ls and then just lah again or ha in any order since these flags are interchangeable. And I'm going to do something called pipe. And I'm going to put that into the grep command and I'm going to search for the string bird. So what is this pipe doing? This is just like the bar character that's above your enter key if you're on a standard QWERTY layout. Uh, and that's saying take the output of this command and put it as input into this next command grep, which is grep is just going to search uh, for the string bird. And now it's going to put out both lines that have the string bird in them. Okay, we've matched bird2 and hummingbird.jpg. Okay, so say I wanted to learn a little bit more about either of these commands. Well, we can use the command man, uh, which is arguably the most important command since that will tell you about other commands. So we could actually run that on itself real quick if we wanted to. We could just do man of man. Uh, and okay, we can see we have the manual page for man. So I'm going to queue to quit out of that and I want to read about ls a little bit. Okay, so I can just go up and down with the arrow keys. Uh, or with J and K, which are the bin bindings. Uh, and we've got all sorts of flags here we can use. Uh, and I happen to want to search for the string list. So I'm just going to type slash and then list. That's going to allow me to search, press enter. And I can just use N and B to go back and forth between those results. Okay, great. And, and you can do this on any command. So I can go man grep and read more about how grep works. Uh, man is, like I said, probably the most important command you really, you kind of don't need to know any other commands other than man, because you can just use man to look up what you need to know. Okay, so if you recall, we had one last file here, which is the text.txt file. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the command cat on text.txt, which just stands for concatenate, and that's going to print out what is in text.txt. Okay, so it's a lot. There, it's going off the screen. I would prefer to have it in a little bit more of a readable format here. So there's a great command called less that will put it into a nice little viewer similar to like the manual viewer where we can just go up and down and read it. So well, if you remember how pipes work, what we could do is just pipe it into the less command and well, that, that'll do it for us. Uh, however, in this case, less can just run on a file itself, so we can just less directly on text.txt. Uh, and that is going to achieve what we wanted to achieve here. Okay, great. So uh, we have uh, all of these files here. You know, I really didn't mean to make two copies and I'm going to remove this pictures directory because I really don't need those other copies. So what can I do? I can do rm and if I just type pictures here, well, that's going to say we can't remove it because it's a directory. Uh, if I just remove this bird2 file here, well, that's going to that's gonna work because it's just a file, but RM has protection saying, uh, don't just remove a directory because if you're in the shell, there's no recycle bin or anything. So when you remove something, it's gone. Um, you could use, you know, data recovery tools to get it back, but for our uh, purpose here, it is gone. So 
what do we want to do? We want to do rm-r, which is going to recursively go through and remove everything in the pictures directory. So rm-r pictures, uh, and that is now going to be gone and all those files are now gone. Okay, well, wait, this is a little bit dangerous, right? Because what if I typed the wrong directory? You know, this could be a pretty big deal. I could erase something really important. All right, so let's, let's read the manual of rm real quick and we can see uh, the, the second option here is a dash I, which is going to prompt before every removal. Okay, so I really want my rm command to run with a dash I, but you know, what if I forget to type dash I and I'm just running rm to remove some stuff. I forget to type dash I. Oh no, it's going to remove something. So let's just make it so that it will automatically run with dash I. So what we can do is we can go into our bash RC file. Uh, and I'm just going to use the nano text editor since the chances are you might have that by default, depending on what you're using. Otherwise, you might have Vim or you can install either one. Uh, I'm going to go into my bash RC file, which is in my home directory, assuming you haven't moved it. Uh, and it's going to be dot bash RC. OK, so we are in the bash RC file. So first of all, you can see I've defined my prompt here. So this is the relatively complex thing that's saying what my prompt is going to be. And there's prompt generators online if you wish to use that. Uh, and the prompt is just called the PS1 prompt in this case. But more importantly, you can see we have all of these aliases here. So we have alias is just saying uh, when I run ls, I really want it to color the output of that command. Uh, if I run c, I really just want it to run clear. So we can just make an alias. So alias rm equals rm dash i. And now we can write that file and quit, and we can just do bash again to re-enter into bash here. Uh, and now if I do ls, if I want to remove this hummingbird.jpg file, uh, well, now it's actually gonna ask me. So I, I really don't wanna remove this. So I'm just gonna do control C, which is just gonna exit that command without running anything. Okay, so now we have remove, but it's really gonna prompt us every time to make sure we really want to remove. Okay, and then one final thing to do, I just wanna, we talked a little bit about pipe, the pipe character, I just wanna talk about uh, putting double and or, or a single and. So I wanna make a directory and you know, then I want to make a new file in that directory and I just wanna do it all in one command. So I can just do make directory, we can just do pictures again. Um, and I want to, after this command finishes, make a new file. So I can just use touch uh, and then I will just call it, I don't know, file to um, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the pictures directory. So why are we doing this and, and that's saying, wait for this first command to finish before running this next command. And if this command failed for some reason, it would not run this next command. And if I were to just put a single and here, well, then it would run both commands. But if the pictures directory, if this, if this make directory command failed and the pictures directory didn't exist, it couldn't run the second command. So we can just put a double and here. Okay, so now we can ls pictures again, and we can see why we have my file to there. All right, and one final thing, we can just use control L to clear this. Uh, and if I wanna go back and, cause I really had a command that I wanted to do again, I can just go up with arrow key or back down to see through my command history here. I'm just gonna CD back to my home directory. And I don't really, I don't have to put a, I don't, I have to put the tilde and the slash for my home directory or I don't I don't have to type it out. I can just do CD alone and that's gonna slap me into my home directory. And we can print working directory. I'm in my home directory. We are back where we started. Uh, hope this helped you out. I am going to make a new video soon with some more stuff going forward about Bash. Just, I don't know, if this is the introduction one, I'll make an introduction two with some more basic commands. Uh, I will make a video about operators, etc. And I hope this helped you out. See you soon.